guys, welcome back. We're going to look at one of the coolest, most striking little knives I've had on the channel a long time. And this isn't even the one we reviewed because this one's mine. Let's turn this around and take a look at the Meerkat M by Max Ace Knives from above. Guys, did not take very long at all to get back around to this. This is the Max Ace Meerkat M. Now, I will tell you this looks really clean because this is not the knife I reviewed. This was given to me as a gift. So this is a great knife, like just striking white G10. Now, this does come in a lot of different versions. There's an S90V version. There's, I think there's black G10 and there's blue and a couple other colors. Uh, but this is the one we're going to look at. So... Let's go ahead and get some specs out of the way. You're looking at 7.1 inches overall, so it's not a very big knife. Uh, it's done in a drop point M390 blade that is 3.15 inches in length. And for a smaller knife, it still is a little bit hefty coming in at 3.1 ounces. It's done in a full flat grind. Let's get some knives out for size comparison because me telling you a knife size doesn't give you as good a reference. So your first knife is the Spyderco PM2 and you can see tip to tail, it's a good bit smaller than the Spyderco. Let's go on to the next one, Benchmade 940, a knife that is one of the most well-known knives in the knife world. So you can see it's a good bit smaller now. And your final knife, as always, Chris Reeves Large Sabenza 21. So you can see it's not a real big knife, but I really dig this. So let's go ahead and get into this knife. Okay, now when Jared sent me the one that I tested, uh, I immediately fell in love with it. It's got some stuff about it that might not be for everyone, but I really dig this. So even though it's a smaller knife, it definitely still allows you pretty much a full four finger grip, even if you have larger hands like me. Um, it's not it's not at all difficult to, to get up on that. And you've got the area here that you can get up on. Now, this blade, even though it's fairly thick blade stock on a relatively short knife, it's nice and broad and it transitions down to a very nice behind the edge thickness. So you've got some good cutting potential. It's got a nice rounded area here for some belly but still has some flat. So you can definitely use this to get up on stuff. This would be a knife, I would say, that would work well for processing small game. Now, it's reverse flick only, but the action on it is super, super smooth. Check this out. Once you get past the detent, just a little shake and it's home. The handles are done in a beautiful, beautiful white g10 and it doesn't have a full liner it has basically like a sub frame lock or a, a an inset lock where you have a little bit of a, a liner that's been screwed in and it's screwed in from here so it's not screwed into this so you can still get that out through the pocket clip on this just incredible it sits right there and because it's at a different angle it's lower down in the knife you can't even feel it that's one of the things that struck me on some of these shorter knives with the bigger pocket clip like this i find that they sometimes they're uncomfortable but on this one it just sits in an area where you can't even feel it and you get up on it like this it, it adds a little bit of thickness to the knife in a way that you want to allow it to feel better in hand access to the lock bar pretty good i was afraid when i first got it when i looked at how like they didn't remove a lot of material it looked a little tight i was afraid i was going to have problems with lock bar access no problem reverse flick only on this the aperture is perfect now i say reverse flick only but you can slow roll it out just like a bunch of other knives with that thumb aperture and then the the knife is just overall beautiful you've got belt satin here on these with these blasted uh flats the markings on the knife are attractive like this is one of those knives like some people are like, oh the billboarding and the font and everything on it looks cool it makes it look good um and then you've got a really on a shorter knife like this i never thought i would say this i'm not a fan of jumping on the spine or backspace or a lot of times but in this knife where it sits you can it gives you a little bit more traction it is functional jimping in a good spot and then you've got this dipped out area here that you get your thumb on just everything about this really well thought out really really well done now i have to admit there's a couple things about the knife that i'm not 
over the moon about. And we'll talk about those right after you see a videos from this channel's sponsor. Shout out to Dahlstrom's for sponsoring this video. I've been using this uh, eight inch Gladiator series chef's knife for well over a year now. And I gotta say, I love it. You're getting a lot for your money when you go with Dahlstrom. There's a link down below. You can check them out. They have a huge variety. You can see some of it scrolling up here on the screen. They have a huge variety of knives, different price points, different materials, things that are going to meet your decor if that's what you're into. So don't forget to check them out. They've been really cool to sponsor this video. They've been a good partner for the channel for a while. Check them out now. Let's turn this around and get back to the video. Okay. Just a couple things. Um, first off, there is a spot here. Can you see that? Um, that is very close. Now, I can touch that. I can touch the edge of the knife right there at the back. It's really tight quarters on that. Let me zoom in. I don't even need to zoom in per se, but you can see that is really, really close to the top. And that's something you might want to look at. Uh, when you think about purchasing this knife, especially if you're somebody that's going to grab this and use it as a work knife and things like that without gloves, that is kind of an issue. Um, now, I mean, I can, I can take care of that. I can take that area out. I can open up that choil. Speaking of the choil, the choil needed to be a little longer anyway, because you can see how it's ramping up. It ramps up to about here. That, that choil needed to come out about that much farther. The next thing, as much as I love the pocket clip placement, the pocket clip screw is actually part of the lock retention. So the screw here also screws into the lock and holds it in place, which means that this knife lost a prime chance to have an ambidextrous reversible pocket clip. And they would have had to have done a little bit of milling and stuff to put the pocket clip in. But I think they could have easily figured that out with some additional hardware or a spot. It would have been cool to have that. The next thing, which is basically the last thing, this is a thick backspacer and they put this massive hole in this. This is a really attractive knife. This is a very attractive knife. It just breaks up the lines. I'm not a fan of lanyard holes. I wish they had put a post in the backspacer. Other companies do it. Max Ace could have done it. You can see that there's still material in there. They could have done it here as opposed to breaking up the beautiful lines of this knife. And then the final thing, this knife did not come very sharp. It was a little bit dull. Now, the one that Jared sent me, um, true, he may have touched up the edge on it, but this one did not come very sharp. And I had to do some touch up and stropping on a ceramic rod. It really wasn't very sharp out of box. But like I said, the one that Jared sent me that I did for the actual review was. So just something to keep in mind if it might not come sharp out of box. But other than that, this is... I really dig this knife. I love it a lot. It's going to go in my case as soon as we finish this and then it'll be in other videos because there's just some knives that just are striking. I like the white and I think it will look good. Is it a yup or a not? In an overall final review, yes, it's a yup. It's a great knife so far. Um, and like I said, this one is my personal one. So it's going to get a sharpening. It's going to get some carry. We may see a long-term review of knives that I absolutely love and I may change my mind over some, some things after a few more months of carry. So guys, let's turn this around, do some final thoughts and send you out about your day. That is awesome, awesome knife. I knew I was gonna fall in love with this the second I saw it when Jared sent it to me. And I, the first day in pocket, I was like, yeah, I really, really dig this knife. So um, we'll, there'll probably be some long-term carry on this in the future. So um, guys, you guys know what to do. Give the video a like, give it a thumbs down. I don't care. Tell me if you don't like the video, why though? Um, you can use my sponsors down below. You can use their links, Coffee Brand Coffee, Tempered Trail, have a discount built into the links. I also have a coupon code that will save you 40% at Beyond EDC, 10% at Rosecraft Blades, 10% at Farron Forge Knife Works, and 10% at Kotsu Knives. So you can use that link. It's crazy sharp, all one word, all lowercase. I have links to most of the major vendors down below where I get a portion of it, a percentage, but it doesn't cost you anything at checkout. And I also have an Amazon store where I get paid for your purchases as well. So take that, pin it your browser, use it for all your Amazon shopping. I've built a public Discord down below. It says, join the community in the description. Go in there, have fun, start talking with, get in there and, and make it more robust and we can have conversations in there. I've got a private Discord that's associated with my membership where I also do giveaways. 
I do exclusive content and there's a premium tier sharpening tutorial series. So guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I'll see you in the next video.